Welcome to Flappy Bird Lesson 4. In this lesson, we're going to see how we can position an object based off another object's position. We're going to review our, our concept of collision testing to see how we can uh, end the game when we either collide with the pipes or the ground. So let's get to it. So let's do a little review of what we have. And you can see here, we're able to control the bird using our keyboard. The ring is flying in on its own at a random location. Uh, we'll also notice it doesn't cycle through. That's for a future video. Uh, let's get to code now. And one of the things I've added to this from the previous video, I've added a couple more graphics. Uh, so these are just straight up sprites. So the sprite for the top pipe, the bottom pipe, and a game over uh, logo. Uh, to use when we actually end up colliding with one of these uh, three objects, uh, whether it's the ground or the pipes. And just to review, these are just sprites. So you can see, I mean, your games can be a combination of sprites and animations, depending on what the purpose is. So the first thing we want to do is now that we have these two uh, sprites in here, we want to kind of have them move with the ring. So you might think, well, we move the ring by using a set vector. Why don't we give the pipes a set vector? We could do that. Uh, and instead of doing like a pipe dot um, draw, we could simply do a pipe dot move. But the easier way of doing this, and I'm going to write it a certain way so it got, kind of looks somewhat obvious. So here's the ring. So we want the top pipe over it, right? Honestly, the way I'm writing it in code doesn't really matter, but it's uh, it'll make more sense. So I want the top pipe to be on top of it. So I'm going to move it to wherever the ring is. Because if you recall, move to needs an X and a Y. So we'll keep the X the same as the ring. So it's going to be in line with the ring. But now for the Y, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the top pipe's Y, the ring's Y, minus a certain amount. Let's say 175. We could always adjust it. So wherever the ring is, the, pop top, the pipe top is going to be a little bit less than, it's, than the ring's Y. And we can do the same thing for the bottom pipe. So this, in this one, we'll move the Y down. We'll increase the rings Y, or, or the reference to the rings Y, so it's a little bit below. And notice, that's a lot nicer than using set vector and a move for the pipes, because then you would actually have to control them separately. In this case, if you really think about it, wherever the ring is, the pipes are right around it. And I wrote the code like this to kind of emphasize that, but honestly, you could have put both move twos underneath. It would have been okay. So let's see how this works. And there it is. Uh, we do notice a little glitch in that the pipe is over the bar. Okay, so that's an easy one. So that's what I'm saying. Sometimes the way you, where you draw these things or move these things will have an effect. So all we have to do here is to move the bar underneath. And that way the bar gets drawn after the pipes. Let's look at that. And there you go. Okay. So right now I'm able to fly through the pipes. You've already seen that I'm able to hit the bar. In the game, whenever you collide with either the pipes or with the bar, the game is over. So let's actually write that if statement. All right. So if, and if you recall, a sprite had it collided with uh, function. Now, if you go to the game library and you scroll down to the animation, you'll see there's not a whole lot in it. <laughs> there's pretty much just the draw function. The reason for that is that a s animation is essentially a sprite. Now, to kind of emphasize that concept, you'll see here it says class animation extends sprite. What that means is that an animation has 
all the functions available to a sprite. So an animation is a sprite with a little extra in that when you draw an animation, obviously you're not drawing it the same way as a sprite because it has frames to it. So that's why if you look at the animation class, you'll see it doesn't have a whole lot, but it really does because it extends sprite. It has everything that a sprite has. So that's where the collider width is coming from. Uh, you're not going to see it here. It comes from the sprite class. All right, so let's go back here to our if statement. So we'll say if bird dot collide it with. And if you recall, th these are pretty nice in that um, all you do is collide it with the bar. Or we're going to kind of continue on with it. If the bird collide it with the top pipe. Or the bird collide it with the pipe bottom. All right, so I'm going to take baby steps here in that I'm going to do a console log before we kind of go the whole route just to prove to you that this if statement works. Because uh, notice we're checking for various collisions here. We're checking for collisions with the bar, the top pipe, the bottom pipe. And let's do simply a ouch. Right. So let's go back to here. Let's pull, pull up our developers tool, our console. Let's hit refresh. And let me collide with one of the pipes. There, see, we see ouch. Now you don't see it increasing anymore. Now let me collide with the bar. So you can see we are able to check us colliding with the objects. So good. We don't, we don't want to display ouch. We actually want to end the game. So as review, game.state is what controls where we should be. And let's send it over to a game over screen. Now, if you find yourself writing something like this, recall that this is a function. So if you kind of do it, I don't want to say backwards, um, but we've identified that we want to have a game over screen. Well, guess what? Now we have to actually create it. So game over screen. So the minute we collide with one of these three things, we're going to change the state of the game from being main to game over. And we're going to keep this simple. We're simply going to do a, um, what do we have it as? Uh, a bird.draw. Kind of keep the bird flapping. But now we're going to draw the, the game over. Now, just as review, because I know there's a lot of things happening here. Um, game over was this new sprite that had this logo on it. Let me show you that one. Uh, it's going to have this on the screen. Okay. So let's close that out. Let's go back to here. So we're going to draw the bird. Actually, we don't have to draw the bird. Let's just draw the, the game over. So we'll see game over dot draw. Obviously, there's more things we can put on here. But we'll keep it simple and let's test it out. So here I'm going to try to do the collision with the bottom pipe. And there you go. Our game is now over. So let's go back to our presentation. So in this video, we saw how we can position things relative to other objects by simply using the move to function. Uh, we also saw that the animation class gets a lot of its functionality from the sprite class because an animation is a sprite with the exception of how you draw it. We saw how we can do multiple collision checks by using the or con uh, combined with the collide it with. And then finally, we reviewed the idea of using game state to change the flow of the game from, for instance, the main to the game over uh, screen function. This was a jam-packed video, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Bye.